Today I thought I would do a, a painting that I did a couple years ago when I did a workshop in Savannah, Georgia. And uh, we had a beautiful view from the back porch of the host of family. Um, here's one of my sketchbooks. And uh, sketchbooks are a great idea. I suggest everybody work in their sketchbooks. It's great for putting in pencil drawings, a little, little watercolors. Um, so these are very, very handy. And I've got one in here I wanted to uh, to show you. Let's see if I can find out where I left it here. Yeah, here we go. So here it is right here. This is a uh, sunrise in Savannah, Georgia. Um, I'll, at the end of the uh, demonstration, I'll give you a list of the colors I'm using and also the uh, paper and the brush brushes that I'll be using. But this is a, just a beautiful, fun, a lot of contrast. We got to have our whites in here, but we also need to push our darks uh, to have impact in your painting. And my uh, palette, it's uh, called the Miller's Workhorse. It's available at Cheap Joe's in Boone, North Carolina. And there's other places you can find the same one. It does come with a lid. Looking at my reference and seeing what colors I've got in the sky. We want to start in the background with the lighter values and then add the darks. So I see a very, very light wash of ultramarine blue. Remember, it's going to dry about 20% 20, 20 or more lighter than it is when it's wet. So I just really keep that in mind. I'm going to use a some quinacridone violet now to make that transition to the warmer sky. What I'm doing right now is I'm looking at it for value, not only color, but also value. And I do see some uh, gamboge coming in from the side. Gamboge with a touch of orange with it, so it's not quite so yellow. Actually, a little more orange than gamboge. That I'm going to take some uh, some permanent rose. Mix that with the ultramarine blue. Then transition to a to more of an orange. I'm taking out that gamboge. It's a little too yellow, so I'm coming here with some orange now with cadmium orange. And I like that better. I think that works better. Take some clear water now and just soften that edge. Soften that edge. I'm looking at the sky again. It's a little more, it's a little darker value blue up in this area. So I'm gonna just hit those blues again across the top. Quinacridone, violet with a little bit of ultramarine blue. Again, you can paint this thing three or four or five times and every time it's gonna look a little different. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm seeing that they're going a little bit lighter than I want. So I'm going back in and hitting the orange but you notice I got in there with one stroke. I didn't go back and forth because then I'll start mixing the violet with it. Now I want it to mix by itself. Now I'm going to take the cadmium orange, just a hint of cadmium red. Now in the very middle, it goes to a light blue. I like that little dark spot in there. So I'm just going to take a damp brush, pull that out. So now what I'm seeing in there is I'm seeing a little bit of phthalo blue, very, very light phthalo blue. It's just a clean, pretty and clean color. Again, especially with the, the oranges here, I got to be very careful because if I overlap those, um, they're going to turn to a brown. There are compliments. And so you got to be careful of that. So I'm just kind of dancing around the edges of that.
Okay, that's looking pretty good. So go back to my orange and my cadmium red. Pop this a little stronger in here. A little bit of permanent, permanent rose in here. Again, I'm getting in and out. Pick up the brush, get in and out of there, and leave it alone. Um, the tendency is to, to play with it, and that's how you get overworked and muddy, muddy paintings. So now I'm looking at color. I'm also looking at value. So I'm going to come out on the right side. It's more in shadow on the right side. So I'm taking some uh, ultramarine blue, putting a touch of uh, Payne's gray with it, and also a touch of sap green. Let's just start greening it up a little bit, but not, but not much. Yeah, if I can do this while it's wet, uh, then I've got a, a chance of keeping it not overworked. And that's almost always a problem, the tendency is to overwork things. So I'm getting in and getting out. I'm not stopping in the middle. I'm sweeping it right off the page. And a tool that comes in really handy if you want to make straight lines is this five gallon paint stirring stick. You can pick these up at Lowe's or Home Depot and they, they work great, especially if you have a little bit of an unsteady hand. Let's just get in here and put that in. I want this to be quite dark here, but you can see how you can slide all the way across your painting with this stick. That's very similar to a, what an oil painter would use, uh, like a mull stick. You know, if I wanted to get in here, I could raise it up and get in here and touch up things. But uh, that allows you to uh, come in here and make a nice straight line when you want to. Okay, that's looking pretty close to what we've got here. Now, when this dries in here, I can put a little more detail in those distant trees. Just in the tops of them, though, I don't want detail in here. They're off in the distance. Um, it's not important and it'd be overworked looking if we start to start playing around, putting in detail ahead of time. You gotta wait till it's time and that's on the subject matter or definitely in the foreground of your paintings. I mean, a lot of times I'll just, I'll take out my hair dryer. Um, it's, it's actually a craft tool, it's not even a hair dryer. It's, it's got one speed, it's hot, uh, and it's a great, great tool. It, um, it doesn't make as so much noise, so it works great when I teach workshops, students can hear me. Uh, it's by Ranger, and it's called uh, Heat It. It's called the Heat It, and it's a craft tool, but it has one speed that throws out a lot of heat, so it dries really, really quick. And it's small enough, it's not bulky like, uh, like most hair dryers are. So what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of looking at this value down here. I know it's going to go too light, so I'm going to hit it with some more Payne's Gray. Again, it's got some Ultra in it, and it's also got uh, some Sap Green in it. Let's stop there and dry that. Okay, let's fan out this brush and put just a little bit of detail in here. And this is farther away, so you're not going to see much detail. So I'm just kind of let's slowly transition this out to nothing. Um, then I'm going to take this and paint this all the way down to my horizontal line. Okay. Then I'll come over here on the other side too. And uh, best thing you can do is is try to work pretty fast. You slow down, you're going to overwork it. You're going to put too much information in. Um, This is working very dry brush, and that's why the hairs are staying fanned out like this. I mean, it looks strange, 
but this gives you a great effect. Again, I'll just kind of fill that in down to that horizontal line. And I am working on a slant. What I do is I use a, like a three ring binder to give me a slant. That way I've got control of where the washers are gonna go. I want them to work from the top and work down. If you lay it flat, uh, it can kind of go off in different directions, uh, especially depending on the paper too, it, it can create problems. I'm gonna kind of repeat the sky in the water. So I'm gonna get in there with some lemon yellow. My brush is a little dirty, so I'm gonna rinse it out some more. Yeah, if you put it in too strong like that, just load your brush up with water and wash it off to the side. A little bit of cadmium orange to match what's going on up in the top. On broad strokes and, uh, and get them in there pretty accurately. I noticed my when, when I painted this, the water was a stronger value than it was in the sky. And we've got a lot of greenery in the foreground that comes in and kind of crops in on this. We don't really see much or any of the blue in the water. But uh, just in case when I paint it, I, I decide I want to leave some blue. I'm going to throw some ultramarine blue in here with just a hint of a uh, phthalo blue. Again, what I just did may totally disappear as we paint, but at least it's in there if I want it. Okay, let's dry that. I think that's dry enough. So as you can see in the reference, the areas where the marsh comes in through here and breaks up the water. So it's, a, it's kind of a nice touch to have that in there. And to do that, I'm gonna to go, to go to a round brush and take some sap green I'm gonna put a little bit of lemon yellow with that. So here we go, we got sap green, lemon yellow, and just a touch of ultramarine blue, just to give it a dark enough value. But I definitely want to lean uh, more to a yellow green. But again, here's where I can use this paint stirring stick. And I can come in here and line this up, load my brush up. I can come in here and I can create that nice little straight line across the distance. Again, these are coming in here off from the left to the right. Um, I'm going to go with a little bit bigger brush with the same colors. I'm going to fan it out a little bit so it's not a sharp point. And I want most of the water out of it so I can drag it across here and get that texture of the paper. It's right about in here somewhere. Let's just kind of drag one across real quick. That's what I wanted. I want that dry brush effect. I've laid that in, now I'm looking at it and thinking, well, it'd be nice if it leaned a little more towards the lemon yellow. So while that's in there, I'm just going to drop some lemon yellow, especially into the middle area where the sky is brighter. And this whole corner gets kind of dark, so I'm just going to lay some of my color I've got in here. Sap, Ultra, a little bit of Pains. I want this to lean towards the uh, dark blue-green, though. Um, and rather than using sap down in this area, I'm going to use phthalo green, which is kind of a cool color temperature-wise. Um, again, I'm going to see mostly the water here. I'm just going to barely have uh, some of this greenery come up into this area. So same colors, Payne's gray, phthalo green, some ultramarine blue. And if you have trouble mixing it up on the fly like I do, uh, pre-mix several of your colors so you're not panicking 
uh, afraid that something's going to dry before you're before you want it to. So um, I can mix it pretty fast. So I uh, seldom do I pre-mix my colors. Now, if I was working really really large, uh, there's a better chance I would do that. Again, see how I've got this brush fanned out. Um, that's what I want. I want that fanned out like that so I can get the more natural look in here. And I'm barely touching the paper. It's just the tip of those hairs on this brush because I want the water to peek through. I don't want that to, to be solid down here. brush is quite dry and that allows me to uh, keep the hairs uh, fanned out and get the nice delicate little touch in there okay let's dry that okay it's pretty much dry there's some areas along the bottom that's still wet but that's that's all right so I want to put in these trees now I'm going to start with this big one here and work across if you notice in this one too, it's got sort of a bluish gray cast to it. And that really gives it a nice cool feeling which complements these warm colors in here. So I'm gonna rest my fingers on here, make sure my hand's clean. And I'm gonna, rather than go up like this, I'm gonna rest my fingers so I can control the thickness of the line. Okay, so I've located that tree. Now I can go back. If it, fan, if it does that, if the texture shows up like that, I've at least located the tree. Now I can go back in here and uh, slow down with a little more water with my brush. And kind of fill that in a little bit. And I do like some of that texture in there, even though it doesn't show up on the, the painting I showed you. Uh, this paper has a little more texture to it. So I'm gonna throw some of these other little branches in here. Again, I'm resting my hand. That way I can make these nice delicate little branches in here without uh, having them get too thick as they get farther away from the trunk. And I added a little bit of a quinacridone violet to this, uh, this color I used here, just to, just to warm it up just a fraction. And you may not even see it on the video, but as we're getting to this brighter area, I wanted it to have a little bit of a, uh, a little more warmth to it. Again, like I said that may not show up uh, on the camera. Here on the other side. Again, you can hear my nails on the surface. That means my hand is resting and I can put in these nice delicate little branches. Well, I've got this color here. I think I'll uh, use that to put in some of these fence posts here. As you can see in here in the foreground. So let's just kind of locate a couple of these quick strokes. I don't want them to be dry brushed. Okay. And I'm gonna get most of the water out of my brush. Uh, and go maybe a fraction lighter with the color, add just a touch more water to it. Make sure your hand's clean. And I'm going to come in here and put in this, uh, this rope that comes across here. Again, I'm resting my hand so I'm able to do that. Since they've got a boat out of sight down below on the water here, I think maybe maybe kind of fun to put, uh, put a couple fishing poles in here. How's that? A couple of fishing poles just leaning up against the uh, this rope here. I'm going to 
actually put another another line in here. All right, so now we get to do some more dry brush painting. Some of it's going to have some titanium white in it to get to get some of these uh, these lighter greens that show up over the darker um, trees. A lot of Spanish moss, and so this is kind of a fun. You put the darks down, then a little bit of opaque white, uh, titanium white or Chinese white, uh, with a little bit of sap green and maybe a little yellow in it, and once the, and then lay that over the darker values to give that uh, nice feeling. So let's get in there with the darks first. So it's going to be ultramarine blue and some sap green, maybe some phthalo green, some Payne's gray. Let's just see what that looks like. Okay. A little more green with it. Okay, so I'm just kind of get it, lay that in real quick. I'm kind of get a feel for what, what I want to do here. Again, I'm going to fan this brush out, drag it down to pick up the texture of the paper, which is, which is really a lot of fun to do. Keep your strokes vertical. I can turn this brush on its side too if I want to do thinner ones. And then it's a matter of do I want that to escape out here the sky or do I want to kind of put something in there? And I, I think I'm going to put the, some value in just to kind of close in on the warmth in this area. But I want that dark enough so when I put in the green with the ultra with a touch of a uh, white will show up. Again, I'm going to use green, some sad green and some lemon yellow. Let's see what that does. Again, fan that out. Okay, that doesn't show up enough, so I got to dry this and add a little more white to it. Okay, let's see if I've mixed up what I need here. Let's just test this. Okay, that's pretty close. I'm going to add a little more yellow and a little more white to it, though. Again, quick strokes, not much water in the brush at all, otherwise the hairs will cl close up and give you solid strokes. And we definitely, definitely don't want that. We want this dry brush feel to really give the impression of the moss that's coming off these trees. Just for fun, I'm gonna come in here on some of these uh, strands and just put a little information to kind of mimic the Spanish moss. It's quite a ways away, so you may not see this, but that's one of those things that's kind of fun to do is just add a little bit of something that, uh, that you may not see in the photograph, but you saw when you were up close to the trees. Okay, let's dry that and go to the next step. So now what I want to do is I want these trees trunks to stand out a little bit. So I'm going to go with titanium white, add some blue to it, and I don't want it to be very opaque, but just enough so that that shows up and gives that cool feeling to those trees. It's in a shadow area, so we don't want that to, to be a very strong color. Let's just see what this does here. All right, let's try it over here. I'm going to put it on the left side. What that does is it allows the trees to show up over that dark background and also makes these colors feel even warmer. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of blend this together here. I know this is all dry. This is damp right now. But let's get into our darks again with this blue in here.
I'm gonna do is I'm just connecting shapes. It's all wet here, so I can go in and drop in this blue. What I call soupy. It's a lot of water with it. And plus it needs, it breaks up this a little bit by having some of this blue in here. Even splatter a little bit in there. Make sure I keep it dark enough on the right side. Okay, let's uh, put a few birds in and we're done. I'm just gonna take some of the dark values that are on my palette here. I'm not worried about color, it's, I'm only concerned about value right now. So I'm gonna use a brush that's got a nice point on it. And put in these horizontal strokes. Come back and go up, come back and go down, depending on where I want the wings on it. So you don't want much, uh, much water in your brush or otherwise it'll, it'll just kind of get too heavy looking. Another thing is to is make sure you have a random pattern with your birds. So often I'll see birds put in and they're all a quarter inch apart or half inch apart. So be very careful of that. I've still got a touch of that blue here. So I'm going to take that and put it right down the side here just to let those fishing poles show up. Maybe just in here a little bit. It just kind of breaks it up a little. I want to go a little lighter value with the, the moss. Um, sap green, lemon yellow, and some white. I just want a few strokes in there that are a little bit lighter, like the sun's getting through and maybe hitting them just a little bit. I'm going to take that same color, but I'm going to add some ultramarine blue to it. And just do a little modeling down in here, just, just to break up that solid dark value. Let's just put some in here. Okay, let's call that quits. Let me take the tape, dry it and take the tape off. Uh, all my demos uh, like this are available if you're interested in purchasing them. So please contact us and, and we'll also put all the information on the paints and the brushes I used and the paper. So thanks for watching.